idea which game is going well or not. It's lagging over there. I'll check, I'll check, I'll check. You guys can keep an eye on the chat and stuff, yeah? <laughs> all right, man. Okay, fine. Clearly, my name is uh, probably Shorbus, but all right, that's cool. I'll keep an eye on your stream. Sega. Sega. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Get off me, car. All right. Uh, Career. Hello, everyone. Today we're going to hang out with two buddies. The underscore Jack Ryan. Say bonjour. Bonjour. And Mr. Dagon Keldrop. Say auf Wiedersehen. Yalli yeah, hallo. Yeah, auf Wiedersehen is for uh, at the Goodbye. end of the street. Goodbye. Yeah, I know. I'm taking so me. long, farewell, auf Wiedersehen, good night. <laughs> I'd like to stay and test my first champagne. Cheeky diddy 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 Lauren, speak a bit. Select an event. Uh, speaking studios, Craig's. Somebody. Yeah. Wait, are you whispering right now, Lolo? Or are you speaking loud? I'm uh, speaking. I'm or... just speaking normally. It's fine. Yeah. I think we're all, fine, good. We're all good. I think so. Okay, I think awesome. so. Somebody amigo. A game I have never played, but seems interesting enough. Which game? Somebody, somebody amigo. <laughs> that sounds like, uh, I don't know, like some weird knockoff. How, how would you call it? It makes no sense. Somebody amigo, the amigo, somebody amigo, no, like, it, it makes sense, but then again, it doesn't. I don't see in what context would you say that in Portuguese. Somebody the meal? Yes, yes, somebody me. Somebody me. Uh, but I don't. Somebody a meal. Somebody a meal. Tá legal. Legal, cara. Você quer já? Você quer fazer somebody a meal? Tá legal, rapaz. É legal, galera. Galera. Teu viado. Oi. Viadinho. Wait, what is this? I thought this was a. Uh... You're doing the boost thing. Oh no, you're doing the fight, the battle thing. You have to beat four different characters by having more distance from them when the timer runs down. Four. Or just by simply... Four or three, I'm not sure. Depends on the levels. Oh, so it's gonna be yeah, two like minutes, I... like one minute per... Yeah, unless you you gain as much so much distance that they just lose from distance before time. But I don't think you're skilled enough to do such a thing. I, I mean, what? I could be talking out of my ass, but... I'm not skilled enough? What do you mean, man? Well, clearly Amy's in front of you, so that's what I mean. But only now, <laughs> only when you started talking, bro. Listen, get is this her, not... See? Is see? this see? not a cyber hangout? See? I am supposed to talk. Also, I don't yeah. know if you know, but if you hold... The shoot button when you have three ice What's balls, you close the three of them at the same time. Ow! Oh my and god. And you're so lost. And I lost. I thought I was supposed to go left. God damn it, let's try Again. It. Again, like I said, no so skills scary. to pay the bill. Jesus Christ, man. I'm done with the hard day Simply of hard work with hard work. Enough. And this dude tells me I ain't got no skills to pay the bill. I am I am also I am also done with a hard day of hard work of trying to sleep. But you, you think everybody can sleep? It's not easy, bro. It's, I know. Uh, That's what been my It's a challenge. So okay. After this one so, that one orders me. So some of the amigo is a rhythm game, correct? It's like an arcade it's a no rhythm idea. game. It's sort of like uh I think so, because, you know, Sega had a whole big thing with this shit when, like, on the Dreamcast, they, they came out with Space Channel 5. 
right. Uh, that has that has like L Lala, I think is the name of the character. I'm not sure, Lolly or something like that. They're they're really into that that thing of rhythm games of these kinds. I remember playing one of these kind of rhythm games as well on the PS1. It was also what? what happened to me? Was it bust, bust a groove? Oh, it's the A button to shoot things. Of course, ah. it's the A. You weak, no Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the other rhythm. I think the first rhythm game I've played, which was a, it was a hybrid between rhythm That's game and fighting right. game, was Bust the Groove. Buster which Groove. was for the PS One. It's for the PS One. Oh, I don't know that game. Oh, it, it's very niche. Very, very niche. Let me check the audio real quick. That's good. Do what you gotta do. Uh, I can you're tell. You're in the middle of a race. Whoops. Oh, cool. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I just you see, to you the see, audio real quick. You see the level of commitment this guy has to the stream. Which no, this is, uh, I am committed. Couch. I'm committed. I'm sure to you are. Until so Arkham's uh, Asylum? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure, bro. I am committed too. Hey, speaking of Arkham games, when is the next one? I gotta finish it still, that Catwoman section, the, the epilogue, and then move on. Oh, yeah, you don't need to, you can skip that, just play the next game. <laughs> Lawrence is like, fuck that shit, bro, what are you doing? Really? What are you even trying to do? Really? Yeah. You're, you're, that's the last thing you'll do, uh, it's beat uh, Two-Face and then the game is over. You already beat the, the game with Batman, so... Yeah, what he said. <laughs> right, so... What do you suggest then? I just move on. Because then I don't know if I should move on to Arkham Origins or... Um, Arkham... Uh, Arkham Knight, you know? Are you, aren't you doing it in chronological release? Uh, Not necessarily. Like, I could do, like, it? the Rocksteady Trilogy... Um, in a chunk. And then do Origins afterwards because it's kind of uh, something that comes before. I right? so I don't know who would agree with me on this, but I would recommend playing Arkham Knight uh, first and then Origins because that was my it is plan. possible that Literally. halfway throughout Origins you might uh, just want to stop and the series and not wanting to. To continue or finish uh, that uh, yes, playthrough. Yes, I understand what you're saying, but I'm not playing this. So if you finish Arkham out. Knight and you still have like the hunger for uh, Batman shenanigans or Batmanigans, um, then you still have Origins to play. Right. I was thinking. What the German of said. Doing, uh, yeah, I was thinking more of doing the. Doing the trilogy. The release order. Uh, the trilogy no, no, first. The yeah, trilogy. Go And then Origin, yeah, yeah, yeah. because it kind of, it's oh, like the origin fail. story of behind the everything, right? Because this the Arkham Knight is direct continuation story-wise. So, yeah, from Correct. Arkham City. But the thing is that I don't mind, Correct. it's just, I know what I'd be getting into by playing Arkham Origins. Like, I know what I'm getting mm -hmm. into. I'm not playing this at the time it came out, not knowing much of the game, yeah. so I, I wouldn't mind. I know what's expected, I see. what I'm expecting. I'm equally eager to play both, um, mm -hmm. but given that I'm playing mostly the story and for the story, the narrative, yeah. I think it makes more sense to play Arkham Knight to you know close up mm -hmm. that trilogy and then get a Absolute. little story revival with uh, Origins. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I can't check the levels on my Twitch because my internet's garbage. So if one of you guys can check. Over 9,000. Uh, You're fine, bro. You're like good. Yeah, if everybody's at the same level, that would be nice to check. Because I reset my uh, my settings on Discord. Everybody's at the same level. I think we're pretty equal, bro. Yeah, pretty equal. I'm a little low too. A little loud enough. Yeah. Say something. It was pretty equal. Yeah. Say Hello. something. Uh, lately, I've been rewatching some series that are going to have some seasons coming out soon. 
okay. such as Stranger Things and The Boys. I've rewatched all the, the three seasons awesome. of Stranger Things, and I'm currently watching the second season of The Boys. How can you watch Stranger Things? Out. Yeah, I I really like that series. I think it's probably uh, it's one of the best series from Netflix. It's it's, it's the best first. season. It's, it's damn it's, son. Is cool. Yeah, the first, yeah, the first season, season is very good. The, the second season has season. some issues of uh, wanting to expand the story and then losing like sight of what the <laughs> what the scope of the story is. Third season, the whole thing with the the Russian super base. I, have no idea. Uh, I didn't watch the third uh, season. Hawkins. Yeah, so I watched like, like uh, three episodes and I was like, I'm done. I'm third season is done. still better than the second season. Uh, too it's little, too much late. more fun to watch. But uh, you really have your suspend disbelief uh, quite a bit. <laughs> it's just like a, a fun ride. Eh. Um, for me, it's one of those series that should have been one season and it would have been absolutely yes. great. Instant one classic, don't need more yeah. than one season. Yeah. Same with Weeds, should have been three the, seasons. The, the first season, the first season is still there, and it's still very good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I would 100% rewatch the first season, but I would never watch more than that. Like, that's my... I think they're okay. Like, the second season, the, the issue is, yeah, it loses sight of what it's supposed to, to, to focus on uh, at times by trying to uh, expand the scope. Uh, mm. But I really like what they did in terms of uh, character development and like uh, the the interactions. Like the, I think the joy of that type of series is the dynamic between characters, right? And the chemistry sure, between yeah. characters. No, that's fair. That's fair. I I just you know for me it's just uh, I felt like if I felt like I felt satisfied when the first season was done. I was like. This mm -hmm, is fair enough. concluded. I don't need more. And then I was, don't get me wrong, I was excited about the second season to see what they did with mm -hmm. it. And I was just like, unnecessary. I I didn't see it as contributing to the series. I was just like, I, it's just, mm -hmm. nah, I don't know. I wasn't convinced, but it's fair enough. I, mean, I still recommend. I'm super excited for the fourth season and it's going to be a two-parter, so. The one that's oh, coming great. now, 27th of May, Assholes. it's gonna be the <laughs> first half. Because, uh, no, yeah, because they're shooting like quite a bit, they're upping the production value. Like, uh, every episode is still one hour, but the finale, it's like uh, a mini feature now. film. The finale of the first part, <laughs> of the first half, is like one hour, 20 minutes. I feel like Fair uh, enough. Stranger Things it was meant to be a little bit of a niche thing that turned out gained a big wide audience and now it became a niche thing again. I think As that intended. makes sense, that argument. Yeah, you know what I mean? it, it was... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indefinitely, it's a, it was a niche thing. The whole 80s mm -hmm. phenomenon thing, it's... I mean, mm -hmm. to some degree, it wasn't a niche thing back at a certain point, but when it came yeah. out, it was popular. alluding to a lot of those things. And then it became really popular. And then the whole synthwave music became very popular as well because of the soundtrack of the yeah, series as well. The, yeah. <laughs> and it's like, wow, now this is popular? Now? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. It's kind of strange how trends cycle like that. Yeah. So many people I knew started listening to like synthwave music because of the series. Because and it became awesome. it became a massive thing as well for gamers and streams and things, always talking about synthwave. Oh bro, synthwave music's the jam shit. I'm like, dude, yeah, synthwave music's been around for ages. Yeah. Now it's the gem. <laughs> yeah. Alright. Fair I mean, enough. When you're that. excited about something you just discovered, right? And everyone's going into it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it, it's like uh, you know, in the 90s, there was this big swing revival in like swing genre revival really? and it became yeah, very mainstream. For me to, uh, understand. I'll give you an example showing you how it became mainstream again. So in the 90s, there was a huge surge of bands that were paying homage to, you know, 50, 60 swing and Bebop and things like that, and you had bands like Royal Crown Review, the Cherry Popping Daddies, uh, what else? Uh, Squirrel Nut Zippers. Anyway, there's a band. Those are bands that are relatively niche. 
like people don't really know the band. But when the movie uh, Mask came out with Jim Carrey, right? Uh, it basically got boarded back into the mainstream through that movie. But that was a movement that was really pumping in the mid 90s. It was a lot of swing revival music. And it's actually one of my favorite things about the 90s that is so niche that a lot of people don't know about it. But I love swing music. I, not necessarily old swing. I love 90s swing music. The revival well, movement period, was right? amazing. Yeah, I, I didn't even know you would categorize that type of music swing music. I thought it was just like a TV show. <laughs> wow. <Music>. Wow. <laughs> Lawrence. TV show wow. TV presentation. Uh, Damn. Yeah. Uh, Damn, like uh, you breaking my heart. The age of TV, 60s. Uh... Breaking my heart. <laughs> but fair enough. Understandable, understandable. Um, but yeah, in that way, I do feel like, obviously, that's one of the great Cabaret things that... Jazz. <laughs> Cabaret jazz. Cabaret <Well, laughs> Obviously, that's one of the great things that, you know, movies and series and things that pass oh, give us as well as some things that are niche end up you know being brought up to the surface and that's uh -huh. that's great to some degree but at the same time it's always a slap in the face for people who are recommending those things for people for ages like bro do you know this do you know and all of a sudden everybody's listening to it you're like dude i literally told you that shit a year ago mm -hmm. now you know how I those guys are passe uh, modern synth music and dark synth and all that shit I had only sure, one sure. Guy, I know that it was your guy, gem, so uh, I know. When I was writing the thesis, I like to listen to that. And he was like, what are you listening to? This is awesome. This is laser punk. It's great. And that was the only per there was only so one person who actually, you know, showed interest in synth music, synth wave music. That was the uh, listening uh, prior to it becoming super popular as it did uh, over the last few years uh, mm. but even then if the genre gets popular then i like it because that will make more people want to play that type of music which means sure. that maybe we'll get more but... cool musicians uh to play good shit for us you know because definitely i think that it was not only stranger things but it was also the whole of... let's say cyber cyberpunkish movement yes. yeah that in, in video games it really brought uh, that forth as well. Hotline Miami was a big deal for a lot of people. Ah, hundred percent. And the soundtrack's amazing. Yeah, and also another like first-person shooter that I forgot the name of. The, the Daniel Deluxe was the Daniel Deluxe does the uh, the soundtrack for, and also Ghost Runner. But that one is a bit less. Oh, yeah, Ghost Runner. Uh, uh, I tried it out. It's it's interesting. It's sort it's of a like short game those, like mirrors. It's kind of like mirrors edgy, I yeah, guess. Mirrors edge with just in the grave and a katana. Yeah. Okay. Ah, I, really I like miss that, mirrors edge. Uh, music on these types of games, right? These dynamic games, where it really enhances your experience. I think it's really. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Ponto, use your boost. You have an item, a oh, boost item. It'll pause the time. Jesus, yeah, you're about to lose again. Don't say again, all right? You said I was about to lose. Don't need to remind you're me. You're not even play playing this on hard. You're playing it on like medium. Am I? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't you're notice. playing for you're playing for like... two stars every time, oh, which man. is fine. Life is hard. Why should video games be hard when life is already very hard? <laughs> Bruh, you don't have it? to. You don't have to game grumps me, bro. I, I get you. Uh, I understand. <laughs> I, I, I feel you. Uh, but sure. <laughs> there are some games that. There are some games that you really don't want to make it more difficult for yourself, and then there are other games where it just can't be difficult enough. It's like Sekiro. It's not difficult enough. It needs to be more difficult. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Not everybody can be a masochist. Uh, I agree. It's, you you got a point. You got a super point. Super. You know what's funny? The other day I picked up Elden Ring again. Uh, uh. Like when I was at my brother in law's house because I was trying it out on the PS5 and shit. Mode, so you picked uh, the mage class? 
No, no, it's not that. I, I just first I wanted to test out how it played on the yeah. PS5, as right, as right, per right. comparison. Yeah, as per comparison to the um, the PC version. And I mean, I play the PC version on a laptop, which is not even that great. But I wasn't super impressed. Uh, I was impressed with other games that were in the Elden Ring, and I was like, okay, this truly mm -hmm. is a machine and plays really well. Um, which game? Another thing was. Well, Ghost Runner, because it was playing like the PS, pretty much uh, in four version, right? It, no, the well, no, the it was PS5 actually version? the PS5 version. Ah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know there was a PS5 port. Interesting. Yeah, and uh, that shit was playing like on 4K, like the setting on quality. That shit was still running like almost 120 FPS. I was like, shit, this shit is okay, fast. Wow. Uh, yeah, but the game's not as demanding, obviously, you know, so that's what you're going to find with some game. Uh, but the funny thing is, I picked up the, the game, and honestly... Problem and the camera, so it's we're we're off stream right now. But uh, oh, okay, we're back. But um, but yeah. So what, what was I saying? You enjoyed going back. Yeah. To the so I still, picked up Elden Ring, but not as much for. Elden. No, no. Like it, yeah, I I just feel like when I went back to it, I was like, I know this is a great game. I really do, and probably it's gonna be my top game 2022, hands down, most likely. I don't see another one coming any close to it at all. Uh, but I actually don't. I don't feel that I want to replay it. You know, I finished it twice, and I'm one. I'm one achievement away from platinum the game, and it's kind of frustrating me. But I, I just don't. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm. I need a big break from that game. I guess it, it's really mm -hmm. like had its place under the sun and now I, I just need to relax by the mango tree for now. Take it easy. Mm -hmm. But that shit... That shit so passed we're ready, uh, Well, we've always been ready, Afonso. You're the one that has barely played it and you have the game. Don't say barely when I have, like, 40 hours on it or something. <laughs> uh, like right, I said, you've barely Ring. played it. When it comes to Elden Ring, I've barely played it, yeah. I'm going to restart this race, because... And I mean, I finished the game pretty fast, as in, like, it took me 80 hours to finish the main story and the game, and most people take quite a longer plus. trail in their first run. So, I have altogether 130 hours, which was the game... Well, which was me finishing the game twice and also just looking around for as many side quests as possible, trying to figure out different things, etc., different paths. So I took my time, I feel, as well, to some degree. Um, but, yeah. Also, it could have been because I played it on the PS5, and even though the controller is better than the old controllers of PlayStation, I still hate the way PlayStation controller feels. <laughs> the way it's set up, I'm, the I'm sure it's unpopular and, uh... opinion. Yeah. Not There's just something about it. It's it's a lot more hefty. It's a lot more mm -hmm. hefty, and yeah, I don't feel like I'm gonna break it like I do when I pick up a PS4 controller, or PS2, PS3. It doesn't matter. It feels more hefty. I will give it that. But it's still, it's still like the 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 shoulder buttons. They feel so flimsy and unnatural to me. God, they always the have. I really don't strong. like them. It's weird. PlayStation. Uh, I think that if and you've always played with them, sealed. it's fine. But for me, me a moment, I'll be right back. Yeah, sure. I think that if you've always played with them, they probably feel just fine, you know. But I didn't grow up with a PS console, and even the consoles that I've always played, different ones, Sega consoles, Nintendo consoles, old school consoles, arcade things. There's none of them where the controller bothers me. Yes. None of them. Only PlayStation. The only one that really bothers me is the PlayStation one. I can't get used to it. And it's very frustrating because there are games that I would like to play that are exclusives. And, you know, eventually I 
do want to get a PS, well, 5, I guess. But, um, I'm still going to have that problem, because it's always going to be a struggle. Also that, and the fact that when it shows... When it shows a square, a circle, a triangle, or X, I still get confused because in my head, <laughs> That's how I feel I'm not used to that. All right. Yeah, but it's yep. it's still letters. It's still yeah, the same. The, yeah, but they're in the wrong spot. You know what I mean? They're in the wrong place. But it's letters. Yeah. So. Got it. So PlayStation's get, the only wrong, one that had to do the fucking. It, it's like controllers for an for like uh, an alphabet, you know. It's like okay, you can't do letters. Here's some symbols. I, I'm like, dude, come on, just just give me A B. I mean, I'm not even comparing it to the Sega Saturn controller, which no, was A B C X Y Z. Like, yeah. You know? For example, if you switch controllers between Xbox and uh, and a Nintendo console, for example, yes. the Switch, like uh, there, I find it more confusing because. It's the same letters, uh, it's different like layout. <laughs> the same, yeah, 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 same letters, but like clocked in, uh, well, in different positions. The only difference is that the Y and For the, the X are changed. No, like the, 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 the A are says it's triangle. I know where the triangle is supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. We had it says triangle, and I'm looking. It says triangle, and in, in my head, I'm doing you calculations, like, like you know. Basically, you have to look yeah, no, down to play a game. Dude, you, <laughs> you know that gif, you know that gif of the lady and all the equations in the background yeah, yeah, yeah. while she's doing. Yeah, that's how I feel every time I see a triangle on the screen. I'm like trying to figure out what what is it? Is it Y? Is it B? Is it A? That's that's what's in my head. I had that uh, when I had to uh, switch from uh, when I switched from the Xbox to the to the Switch. But never uh, with a with a PlayStation controller. Understandable. I, I get that. That's fair. But like for example, I spent my life playing Nintendo, which has always had those buttons, and mm -hmm. the first Xbox, and it's never been a struggle for me to just switch between them. It's like okay, okay. as soon as as soon as I know that Y is where X is and B is where A is, that's it. There's nothing else to it. It's literally the only difference. <laughs> Well, there, there you have, folks. Ah, I'm just saying, you know? Just say <laughs> Shit. Say You're a shame to your country, boy. You're a shame. Poor place. Disgusting. Oh my god, fail. I'm embarrassed. As you should be. Hmm? Ah, same. <laughs> Restart. So, uh, are you are you boys excited for uh, Obi Obi One? I am cautiously optimistic. Um, it's going to be a short series, like it's six episodes. So hopefully, it's going to be more concise and to the point. Uh, because of the cast, especially like uh, Ewan McGregor uh, being the the focus point of the the story, like. Sure. Uh, hopefully, it's uh, it's good. Um, yeah, people usually like the Obi Wan milk. Yeah, they're trying to milk that period of the the Star Wars yeah. saga as much as they can, meme, but like uh, being close enough to the yeah. original trilogy without mm. being in the original trilogy. Which, uh, I get it. It's a safe bet. Uh, I'm a Star Wars fan, and I understand uh, that hook, but uh, I'm kind of tired of it. Uh, I mean, the thing is, I, I know you're a Star Wars fan, but I mean, dude, you, you do recognize the shortcomings since the original trilogy, right? I'm just saying. Like, Well, I, I yeah, just... like, uh, it, 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 unfortunately, most mediums of Star Wars have not been able to develop uh, from the formula that the original trilogy established, uh, and when the when the prequel tried to veer off into a different direction, uh, it was met with very hard criticism. Uh, a similar thing could be said for the sequels, but uh, I'm not gonna even bother with that. No, don't, don't bother. Um, but then you have like uh, unique jewels like Knights of the Old Republic 1 or 2, more 2 because 
it really delves into a more like brainiac perspective of the the, the mythos of the, the the franchise and it really uh, gives like uh, an honest effort to evolve uh, the series like uh, just to give like a, a specific example the antagonist of the second uh, Knights of the Old Republic game uh, she hates the force and wants to try to find a way to um, to destroy the force itself because in her perspective the force is apathetic to uh, both light and dark it's both at the same time and in her perspective both the Sith and the Jedi are wrong and they are stubborn dogmatic people who refuse to see the full face of what the force actually is which is something that influences the the life of uh, the beings in the universe uh, with very uh, disregard yes. um, about uh, what happens mm. the, the, um, yeah and unfortunately, yeah, it's always going to be that in the more mainstream platform, uh, good versus bad. Uh, even for the sequel trilogy, like, instead of trying to go somewhere new, they had to do a Frankenstein's monster. Like, the Empire is back, but not really. But it's all the same visuals, and the first movie, it's like... <laughs> recycled version of the uh, of a new hope and Empire Strikes Back, like visually and the plot wise. Yes. But yeah. Fair enough. You gotta stop me, guys. Otherwise, I'm just gonna continue. Oh, I, I was gonna say where I don't shut up. <laughs> I was just gonna say. I mean, so but you are you are cautiously optimistic, but excited. Yeah, to see the new I think movie. I'm. I think I'm gonna have a good time watching it. Uh, I just have to put my keep my expectations in check uh, because, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't want to get burned anymore by that series. Like, uh, understandable. Many. Yeah. I think that um, these new Star Wars series are doing a great service to the fans and people getting excited about Star Wars again. Uh, yeah, it gives life to the franchise and the community. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, but also they're doing two things, uh, mostly with this Kenobi series, which is they're really milking the fact that fans want more Kenobi and also the, the second coming of Christ as in Ewan McGregor's Obi-Wan Kenobi is Jesus, the whole internet meme that's been going about for like 15 years, 10, 10 years, let's say. Well, um, no, there's a lot of people who are excited about that, right? Like, we get to mm -hmm. have Kenobi again, you know, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. But then there's also yep. something that I don't like so much that Disney is doing, which is, um, it's kind of deceitful and it works, which is to give you like little uh, nostalgia snacks, right? Meaning, mm -hmm. by simply mentioning things that you're a fan of, or putting mm -hmm. them in front of your face, it's going to make you happy. Even though the way it's used is not necessarily great, you know? Not the execution yeah. of display or the execution of showing it to you, but rather like making the Boba it something... Like the Boba Fett series. Uh, yeah, but that's exactly what I mean. So making it something that you could be excited about to see... Like, we haven't mm -hmm. seen anything new. You know what I mean? Like, proper the new. In the Mandalorian, no, but I mean, in the sto like story-wise, in the the canon, anything that really is gonna like shake things up and changing, it feels pretty much like it's always a setup for something, and they give you something else, mm. and, and that setup for the something, the something also feels like a setup, so it's I almost see. like they're trying to catch up one thing after the other. You know what I mean? It's not cliffhanger. Mm. I have cliffhanger. no idea what you're saying. No, um, some people make that criticism with MCU movies, for example, is that yes, every exactly. MCU installment yeah. is is just a setting up the a next step one. from a, a stairs, and never like a self-contained thing. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's either uh, 
prepping the next thing to come or uh, referencing something that came before. Well, I mean, isn't the whole idea of the MCU universe to keep going for the next 30 years yeah. as it's been going for the last 20? Sure, I mean, obviously, it, it that's what they're going to do. Exactly. It's supposed to be like way. a chain linked. Yeah. Like, mm. the, the stories should all fit in a big puzzle like they did from the first Iron Man movie until um, uh, Endgame, right? And the stories were mm. often contained but they were happening in an overall universe that is connected, and that was fine. But here, mm. with the Star Wars different series, um, mm -hmm. I really feel like we're going somewhere, but I don't know if the writers actually also know where, they're, where we're going. I'm not sure uh, that they actually Anyone that writes for Star Wars, Wars doesn't know how to write in the first place, so I'm gonna cut you right there. Uh, well, I'm going Sorry, to be no. and disagree on that one. I think it depends on who's involved. I think Favreau and Feige, right? Um, no, not yeah. Feige. Feige, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, Feige. Did a great job. Yeah. Um, in the execution no, not Feige. Of the uh, it was Favreau uh, and Filoni. Feige. Uh, Filoni, sorry, is sorry. The... Feige is the MCU guy. Filoni is the Star Wars executive guy. Executive of, of uh, the MCU, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think they're doing a great the, job. Uh, Dave Filoni. Stuff. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay. Mm. But I don't know if Kenobi. Uh, like, he is uh, the protege it. of. Uh, of? Dave Filoni is the protege of uh, George no. Lucas. Uh, right. He first started working at Skywalker uh, Ranch uh, when uh, George Lucas um, uh, was doing his uh, Clone Wars uh, series. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave the Filoni. The Network one? Uh, uh, afterwards, the the 3D one. Um, 3D one, okay. Uh, he was writing for the show. Uh, he came up with the character of Ahsoka, for example. Um, and he then uh, eventually uh, got more responsibilities, being in charge of the the. He didn't become quite a showrunner, but yeah, I think he was at some point uh, uh, part of the creative uh, decision uh, along as well. Get ready. Uh, same thing for Rebels. I think Rebels, he was more in charge of, of stuff. And then, yeah, more recently, uh, he and Favreau then... Uh, co-created the show Mandalorian, which is to this day my favorite uh, piece of uh, Star Wars. Yes. Uh, discounting Knights of the Old Republic and mm -hmm. uh, Empire Strikes Back. So I really should watch the Mandalorian just so I can shit on it. Definitely. Yeah, but it's. Uh, I think it you will find parallel. more pleasure in the Mandalorian than either the prequels or the sequels for, for you. I, I think you might not enjoy The Mandalorian as much as the original trilogy, but you will enjoy The Mandalorian f for uh, certain aspects that it uh, manages to... Um, not... What's the, the, the right word here? Um, it comes close to 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 the original uh, trilogy um, in terms of uh, assets like uh, um, uh, so the, the the set design and the the, the whole um, the war. Sure, sure. uh, it makeup, finds a very a very yeah. It finds a very good balance between uh, visual effects and practical effects. Okay, I see. Mm. Special effects. And it it feels palpable. That's that's the word I was looking for. Because I think uh, because it is for a, a big gripe that people uh, have with the prequel trilogy and the sequel trilogy is that <gasps> stuff doesn't feel palpable uh, in comparison to the original trilogy, right? Uh, the practical effects in some way make it feel more uh, palpable, more. Uh, you don't feel the green the screen as much that. in the Mandalorian. Yeah, they use a similar technology that they call it uh, the... What the fuck do they call it again? It's, it's basically like a 360 uh, screen uh, that they use to, to uh, portray uh, environments. And uh, if anyone's interested, you should watch the making of the Mandalorian series. It's 
just from a technical standpoint, like it's very interesting to see how they uh, they produce that series. Like, okay. Um, yeah. Well, good. Uh, okay, I see. I get you. I can dig. <laughs> I can dig it. I'm not. I am excited for the build, but mm -hmm. I don't have, you know, uh, insane revelation high expectations, you know, I'm just going to try to enjoy seeing the performances on the screen and where the story is going to go mm -hmm. and how things connect and uh, what's the next thing that they're going to set up after Kenobi? Is it uh, another season of The Mandalorian, uh, chronologically speaking? Uh, possibly, yeah, uh, since they realized that um, they fucked up with the uh, Boba Fett series. I don't think they fucked up. They're gonna up. try to... They didn't fuck up, but they realized that the, they they had a problem to the to the point where uh, two and a half episodes out of how many? Seven or six from the Boba Fett series were actually Mandalorian 2.5. <laughs> where am I supposed to go? Ponce para a tua esquerda, olha para, as, olha para as setas roxas, direita! Direita! Estás aí para trás! É para ter um gol! Look, look at the shining... Ah, yeah, those things! Ai, 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 eu perdi 5 spots! Ai, 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 now this is not racing. Come on, it's super appropriate. It's just... One of the harder uh, racing games I've ever played is actually the, the pod racing for the, the 64. Racer? Yeah, yeah, it controls it's a little bit. It's so fucking insane. Yeah. I remember that. Not but it's meant, it's, it's, meant to con it's meant to be controlled like, it's meant to be hard as fuck. That it was already mm. made to be that way. And I'm like, dude, mm. this is... Now this is not pod racing. This, this is, is just children. nonsense. <laughs> Even though the guy driving the thing is actually a child, but uh, yeah, we don't have a horse. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. See, we're fine. We're in the first uh, place again. No worries, bro. Yeah, I see. Yeah, you got Joe on your tail, but yeah, I see. Good man. Why don't you drop your inflatable fish? What are you keeping it for? for I was waiting for a quarter. Hey. You were waiting to get hit by a sonic There's always robot. There's so much stuff yeah. happening in these uh, tracks. I know, right? Do you understand Is why there? I couldn't find my way? Okay, now I, now it, I know. It, in, 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 in comparison to uh, Mario Kart, for example, I, I find... Oh, Mario Kart is very sober. Compared yeah, to there's Mario more to this game than there is to Mario Kart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is also you got the, the switching cars and things. This is more yeah. like Diddy Kong Racing, yeah, right. and even in Diddy Kong Racing, it's a lot more sober than this. But it's more yeah. the same. It's Actually, I don't know if you guys ever played. Um, there was the Wacky Racers driving game. I don't know if it was for the first PlayStation. I, I know it was on a Sega console when I played it. Racers. Huh? Is it called Wacky Racers? Really? I think it's just called Wacky Races, oh, okay. Wacky Racers, or Wacky Races. Uh, but you you know what uh, what I'm talking about based on the no. series. I don't think no, so. I have no idea. Let me yeah, of course you guys do. Wacky it's racer. it's that series with yeah Wacky Races. It's it's that guy. It's based on that cartoon with the the dog, Muttley, and the the evil oh, dude with the purple yeah, yeah, suit. Yeah, of course, of course. Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was a cel shaded game. It was very very good. Yes. There was a game about it? Yeah, yeah. Yes! Okay, yes, I'm pretty sure it was for the first PlayStation. Cartoon looking game. Like visually very nice at the time. Okay. Okay. I, I'm pretty sure I played it on the Dreamcast, but I think it came out for the PlayStation 1. Yeah. And that shit was also I mean, obviously it's more sober than this because the graphics don't really allow you to have that much uh, -huh. uh into it. But it was also this because every character has a different racing car right like in the series so they all have special things some of them can fly some of them can do different things and it was super like at the time i remember playing it and think wow this is really wacky it really is wacky man um 
But yeah, but Mario Kart is has always been more sober. I mean, they, I think the least sober one is probably do Double Dash, also because you do have the system of doubling up, like having a team uh, on a cart. One? But aside from mm. what, yeah, it's my favorite. Uh, which is still, yeah, it's one of the favorite for most people. It's it's my favorite as well. It's so much. Um, but that that is the least sober Mario Kart you have. Then they're all pretty. They're all pretty tame, I'd say. Uh, mm -hmm. Diddy Kong Racing was less tame as well, because you had like boss battles where you had to run away from bosses or had to do things. There was more things yep. to it. Mario Kart, Kart is just straight and simple to the point. Yeah. Like, Mario Kart is, you know, just, yeah, you're in a karting, you're in a kart. You go forward, turn left, turn right. It's more like NASCAR than anything else. There's really nothing much happening. They turn left, just like NASCAR. But um, but yeah. Uh, I personally, when I watch this, I don't find this actually that busy. But I think I'm too used to this kind of thing. Yeah, but I'm just like, yeah, it's too busy to me. But uh, I also grew up on Crash Team Racing and playing Mario with friends. Um, I, I always enjoyed arcade racing and kart racing in video games more than the actual, Same. you know, simulators and stuff, Gran Turismo, like Formula One uh, games. Speaking of which, why do you think series like uh, this, the game they're playing with right now, that are sometimes called like uh, Mario Kart uh, type of games, or mm. would you would you uh, give another terminology for it? Uh, I no, I mean they they instituted, clones, but... but they instituted the genre. I mean, yeah. uh -huh. the whole karting genre. Not that obviously there was a lot of driving games before and arcades and even an Atari and shit mm -hmm. and egg type yeah. bike things like that. But Mario Kart really instituted this whole, you know, competitive Using eight players items. on a track on carts. You can use the items. This is. Also, All okay. the games after are Mario clones. Building so, on so. that, then I have two questions. Like, Wait, hold on, hold on, uh, hold on. I think we have to make the difference yeah? mm -hmm. also. Um, first, sorry to interrupt. That um, at the time, so nowadays these types of games are um, have different categories in the sense there's kart racers, arcade racers, and then simulators, right? Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, in the beginning, well, the simulators were pretty much the arcade thing because that was the best they could do at the time, right? So at, at the time, mm. it was all racing games in the 90s, mm -hmm. uh, 80s and 90s, I would yeah. say. Uh, it didn't it really a matter bunch much. Of racing games. Uh, the 90s, uh, how you feel about it, but nowadays, yeah, it's distinct. And Mario set, you know, the tone for the type of karting games where you these items mm -hmm. in competition and it's cartoony as fuck. Well. Okay. Uh, but yeah, sorry, keep going. You had two more questions. No, but then still uh, in that topic, like two questions that kind of go in different directions. The first yeah. one would be, uh, if that's the, the case, why do we still call it uh, Mario Kart type of games, like the type of games that you are playing right now? When, for example, we don't call third-person shooters that use a cover system uh, Gears of Years War clones. Yeah. For example, and uh, why did games like F Zero kind of disappear from the main spotlight? From the mainstream, well, yes. I'll yeah. give you a. a give, no, but the thing about F Zero, yeah, which is very simple, like Mario Kart. Yeah, yeah, the reason F Zero faded away is very simple. F Zero is literally what you would play on an arcade console. Yes. That's literally the appeal of the F Zero type racing. And that disappeared. If anything, if you want to look at what F Zero became, yeah, if you want to consider what it evolved into, it evolved into Need for Speed Underground and Need for Speed games. That's literally F Zero developed into being less science fictiony and being less. Fun. But that's the kind of racing based on speed over or skill and stuff. Yeah, like that, yeah, yeah, that kind of because they're arcade games. That's really where. They come from, it's like a... What's that? There's a super classic arcade game where you're just a car driving forward. Uh, fuck, I don't remember. It's it's like the iconic first arcade driving game. Mm. Uh, the Formula 1 one? For Sega? 
Like no, no, like Atari for day. arcades. Ridge Racer? Yeah, if... No, Ridge Racer. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. This is like 80s game. This is an oh, old school that, that, game. Late 70s, 80s that's game. Ah, uh, with the red uh, That's my domain. And the that's yes, side. with the red yeah, card. Yeah, is it yeah, Outrun? Yeah, yeah. I think it's I called know. Outrun. I don't know. I think it's Outrun. You don't even Outrun. sit, you, you drive it standing up on the machine. You know what I mean? At the arcade, it's, right? Okay, so, I just, yeah, I just looked at it, Outrun, yes. Outrun is 100%, okay. like, legitimately, I feel the papa of these kind of, like, F-Zero games, and things like that. Because it's all about, it was a pioneer in hardware and graphics, and it had, like, a selectable soundtrack, it was mm -hmm. really, like, ahead of its time. And I also mm -hmm. think that it had a sort of like a cyber wavy soundtrack at the time, even. And um, okay. that kind of developed those kind of arcade driving games, like you would have F Zero and other things like that. But you don't talk about Outrun as these games being Outrun clones either. The reason that probably you look at it this way for Mario Kart inspired games, it's because they're go kart games, literally. They're, they're go karts. Mm -hmm. So, that's where, why it would be similar. You were talking about the whole cover thing in the Gears of War clones. That's a game mechanic. It's different. Yep. Th this is uh, more... That, that's a this distinction, is, not the yeah, game mechanic, the but the, the formula of the game itself. Yeah, it's, it's a completely yes. different formula of the game itself. It's just a game mechanic that, you know, got input into most third-person mm. shooters. Right. But yeah, when it comes to go-kart games, the formula is literally the same over and over again. There is mm -hmm. not... It's a go-kart. You're on a go-kart. It's a go-kart game. And it's like mm -hmm. now whenever you play a game that's fucking hard as shit or impossible, it's a Souls-like. Even if it has nothing to do with a nothing Souls game. With, yeah. <laughs> Cuphead is so a Souls-like game of like... 2D side-scrollers. Like, dude, yeah, it, it's got nothing to do with their goal. Uh, it, it's... People just like inputting things that bring familiarity, so it's easier to categorize things. That's how these things happen. Um, but yeah, in that way, Lawrence, I think that hopefully that uh, answers your question about why these are Mario Kart clones mm -hmm. more than anything else. Yeah, I'm just asking questions to get you guys starting. What was the oh, sure, sure, sure. It was the and whole F Zero. Why did it uh, stop being uh, popular? That things? genre, yeah. Why did that genre of racing kind of dimmed out? I think it's also thing. because there's other games that branched out, and people. It's not mm -hmm. that that those games aren't worth playing anymore. It's just that the interest moved on to something else. Also with just the whole, else, uh, yeah. with the whole how do you say the whole culture around it. For example, Need for Speed. Need for Speed. Need for speed. <laughs> need for skis. <laughs> you need skis, need bro. First, need, need for skis. skis. Uh, need for skis um, <laughs> came about at a time where tuning was very popular and also um, Holy shit, Fast yeah. and the Furious, yeah. right? There's Hold on, on the ground my too. drink is here. I gotta go. What a game. Cool. Talk uh, yeah, about Fast and the Furious important. then. <laughs> okay. I never watched any Fast and Furious. I have nothing to say about it, so. No? You have no but feelings uh, whatsoever about the None movie. whatsoever, never watched it, never will watch it. That's <laughs> what I know, really. Uh, okay. But I also think, like, when it comes to the racing genre, the driving genre, uh, mm -hmm. albeit what Afonso was saying, um, I do think that with the advancement of graphics and the advancement of capability of consoles, a lot of the interest started switching into realistic driving, you know, simulation driving. Ah, and I think yeah, that's yeah, yeah. also what gave... Gran Turismo, for example. Yes. Sure, Gran, Gran Turismo, which is sort of the pioneer. And on the Xbox, you have, now you have the Forzas, and Forza. you have a lot of these games. And Forza these games is, have uh, kind of gotten the limelight. Huh? Forza is essentially a Gran Turismo clone, if you look at it that way. Sure, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it uh, evolved like, into something uh, else, right? Yeah. Uh, now Forza mm. is a bit uh, more developed now. than Gran Turismo. We have two Forza. I mean, you, you got five Forzas. No, no, no. I mean, you have two. You have Forza and Forza Horizon, right? A series of Forzas. So, yeah. Forza Motorsport yeah. is more the simulation type thing, and Forza Horizon is mm -hmm. the same 
thing in terms of the aesthetics more of the car, but the driving is more arcade style and more of a laid back experience that is more focused on mm. fun and rather than. Isn't there one one you have like a semi open world and you can just drive your cars around and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Forza that 4 you can uh, already project, do that. Uh, and then Forza cars. 5 you can as well. Project Cars was very good. Project I, uh, Cars. Yep. Oh, I thought you were talking within the Forza thing, because within the Forza thing, within the Forza franchise, you do have open world. Forza yeah. Four, Forza Horizon, and Forza, Forza Horizon, Horizon Five and yeah. Four. I'm pretty sure it's open uh, world. That's how it is. Yeah, Forza Horizon is that experience. Um, I'm not sure if Forza Motorsport ended up also having open world, but Horizon is the one that follows that. Mm. But a lot of games follow that from mm. it too. For example, I was very lit, disappointed, let down, with uh, Burnout Paradise, um, because I really mm. enjoyed the first few, first few hours, but then I got sick of playing the same track, like the same That's map literally just over. arcade uh, over and over and over, bro. But it was the same it? fucking that, track, <laughs> right? That's coin-grabbing uh, That's coin grabbing games. It's literally, you just play them over until you get better at them. That's well, literally what those kind of games yes are. Yes and no, but here, it was the same map all the time. And they just use the city to draw, and the city configuration, um, or the island, to draw different tracks on it. But it's always the same shit over and over again. Oh, like Midtown Madness. Like yeah, 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 yeah. But even Midtown Madness has different tracks. Burnout Paradise is just one city, you know? Okay. Which lo looks a bit look I mean, it's similar to each other. For me, Burnout um, 3 was my favorite one. Uh, Takedown, right? Uh, it had like, yeah. several different, yeah, Europe, America, I mean, and Asia. I'm not gonna act like I've played. That was awesome. I finished that game like two or three times for the first Xbox. And it played so well. And the music was amazing for the game, for what it was, mm. uh, for the style. Like, it had a lot of uh, really, really good funk good rock music. Um, it was awesome. I. Burnout 3 is maybe my second favorite arcade game, arcade racer of all time. Yeah. Okay. Really, really cool. Fair play, fair play. Seven, it's so funny that we talk about driving uh, games and it's literally one of those genres that we don't we at all. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> mm. I can't remember the last time I actually bought. We had the best um, a driving game. Within the last five years, oh, no. I bought Ride 3, the motorcycle driving game. It, that's, that's yeah, but that's motorcycles. motorcycles. It's already a subgenre. It's it's not yeah. necessarily. It's very niche. And it's I don't know, like, collectors too. Like last that game, one I uh, bought shows you different motorcycles you can unlock throughout the ages, and it's for people who love mm -hmm. it. They respect the sound the engines make and shit. It drives great, like it's fun, not too realistic, right? Just a little bit, but. Um, it's more for people who really enjoy motorcycles, uh, I would say. Not so much an arcade motorcycle game, not at all, actually. So yeah. Sorry, Lolo. What game did you play? That's fine, that's fine. Um, the last driving. time I bought one like that was for the 360. Hmm. And let's see if I can still get the, the title correct. I think it was Dirt 4, like Colin. Oh, yeah. Uh, one of the Dirt, Those are fun, man. Dirt, yeah. Select an event. That like was like what, 2011 or something like that. Mm -hmm. You want to know which one the last one I bought was? Car Team Racing. <laughs> Go for it. Well, no, but those don't count. We're not those talking about go kart ones, about right? Yeah, yeah, if we're going like yeah. that, I'd say Drive Mario games. Kart 8 Deluxe. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, so I mean, for me, games. for me, it would have been Road Rash 64 for the Nintendo 64 that came out in 19. <laughs> came out in 1999. <laughs> so. Know, uh, and Road Rash is uh, amazing because it's motorcycle. I mean, I, as far as I know, Road Rash series is still ongoing, or it was up until not too long ago. Um, Rash, it's basically Rage, a game. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. It's it's motorcycle driving, and you get to engage in illegal shit, so you get to be violent, and you can like hit the other players. Yeah, <laughs> and it was really good with baseball like, bats, and chains. And... There's a few games yeah. like that. I had the exactly. PlayStation. The first one it was awesome. Shout out to an old game that not that many people played, a motocross game for PlayStation 1, Travis vs. Pastrana. Um, oh no, it. No, sorry, uh, McGrath vs. Pastrana. So there's Travis Pastrana, like a motorcycle uh, 
uh, what do you call it, a motocross and freestyle legend, right? And also Travis. It's, it's uh, like playing uh, Kelly Slater surf thing. Yeah, sure. yeah exactly. Uh, Same thing, but for, uh, for the PlayStation. So much fun that right. game. I completed it like two, three times as well. Um, and I have always, I mean, even for the Xbox 360 and for the Xbox One, I bought maybe like two or three of those games, super cheap, right? Motocross games, freestyle motocross, where you do tricks in the air or you can run races. Um, Don't forget you have a I boost as an playing. item. Yeah, oh, okay. I end up then not playing them, or I play them mm. for a short time, but every time I do play them, I'm like, oh, I love these games. Yeah. It's, uh, I was one of those gamers as a kid, more on the casual side, like football. Well, it's also because you didn't really have the time uh, to invest in non-casual yeah. gaming. Pretty much. Um, right? Because, yeah, I mean... That's a part of it. Um, so those games... Had you had so no fun. time limitations to play, you would have gotten bored of those games. Yes, and then I would have started playing other shit. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's one thing I always say, and I remember having this... Uh, discussion with Adriana as well. I was telling her like, yeah, you know, like I realized that I was I was blessed as a child because I think about my closest friends that had you know limitations as in like they can play for one hour a day or an hour and a half, and I'd be like, dude, how how can you how like how do it's you live? what do you do? It's uh it's and I didn't even play that many. Like if you think about it, I. Played Super Nintendo and NES games. It's not like they were uh, demanding. I mean, of course, sure you have RPGs and things that were more demanding, but that's not necessarily the the base of what I played anyway. And even just playing games that had story-wise maybe two hours that you could finish within two hours, you would never finish it within two hours because it was hard. And if I had not had the possibility to just keep playing them, I don't think I would have ever. I don't think, personally, I would have picked up video games as a hobby if I didn't have the time to invest in it the way I did as a kid. Personally. But, yeah, I mean, that's me. And I always think, like, I always tell people it's like this. From my perspective and the way I was educated from my parents is if your kids like video games, if they love doing it, don't stop them from doing that. The only thing you have to tell them is you can do this. As long as this doesn't, you know, cover, you know, your academics, for example. I don't know. That's what my parents always told me. You do well in school, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Why wouldn't you? You're doing well. That's your only job as a kid, is to do well in school. I mean, for parents, generally, that's the only job you have. So if you're doing that, why would people not allow you to do whatever the fuck you want outside of that? Yeah. Although, you know... Our parents' generation is also different, I guess, because uh, even nowadays, my mom tells me, like, dude, you, you play too much. Like, you shouldn't <laughs> play. Like, it's, it's below your age. You shouldn't be playing. It's wrong to play. Yeah, I'm like, video games were uh, marked and sold as toys for their, you know. I know, you know, you had Mattel consoles and shit as well, so obviously it was marketed for kids too. But I mean, this was the whole, sh this was the whole shtick of Sega in the 90s. It's like, this is not for kids. This is for teenagers and young adults. It's not for kids. You, you need to... They try to diversify their their target audience, and that's one of the reasons I love Sega, is because they were the first to truly do that. Like, to really try to push the boundaries of what is acceptable as a gamer. Uh, I really like that. It's very... It was a very bold move. Sure. Yeah, but you had Mortal Kombat before home consoles as well and things like that. No, I'm not denying that. And I think that arcade arcades were also seen as kids things because it was, but eventually you would see adults in arcades too. But I do think that it was mostly Methadone young kids. for gambling addicts. <laughs> yeah. Um, but as soon as the industry grew and things like it became something really different like when I think about kids playing nowadays kids don't play the shit I played kids are playing fucking modern warfare and doing like fatalities that are way more graphic than what I did when I was five you know 
it's fucking it's insane i mean look at that i don't know which call of duty it is or if it's a modern warfare where you start the game and you shoot everybody in the airport wasn't yeah. that shit controversial as fuck yeah, for some reason that. like the first mission of one of the That's, um, and it's like one of the questions that we ask no russian gamers, like yeah no russian did you pull the trigger or not in that mission lolo did you pull the trigger during that mission uh, i think i did yeah yeah, me too. Because you're playing it as a part, it's like watching a movie, right? You want to do the scene, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So... Yeah, it was a very interesting feeling, like, yeah. uh, oh shit, I know what I'm doing is super wrong, but so just what? having, yeah. like, the the, fa the the room for this fantasy w without repercussions and no actual, like, uh, um, but, yeah, it's... Uh, Disturbing on a few levels. It has like, uh, <laughs> huh? It's disturbing on a few levels. B -class. But also yeah, understand. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, on GTA you can do heinous stuff, you know, um, before that game came out, right? Yeah, but it uh, it hit differently. Mm -hmm. uh, Manhunt I also, say, like, you know. Uh, um, but this is different. Being this a terrorist on GTA being 3 a terrorist, yeah. and uh, playing uh, No Russian on uh, Modern Warfare 2, it's completely oh different. I agree with you. Yeah, Because one of them feels like you're goofing around the other one. For me, it had a very serious tone to it because yeah. uh, Modern Warfare, especially mm -hmm. during that time, I think they were producing very good campaigns to feel like legit, you know, uh, Hollywood uh, movies, if you like action movies and stuff. And mm -hmm. that was a level of seriousness that I was not ready for, you know, in terms of the, mm -hmm. both the narrative and both the place of video games in society. Um, because mm -hmm. I thought to myself, oh no, this is gonna, there's some freaks out there who are gonna play this on repeat. And I do find that <laughs> uh, disturbing because you're giving that opportunity, right? The same way when you have GTA, you give the opportunity for some people to over and over just you know, kidnap people, put them in the car, and then do all sorts of crazy stuff to them, right? Um, mm. Even though that's not the goal of the game, there's much more to the game and to the story. But that's mm. how some people, you're offering a platform to those degenerates, you know what I mean? Who want to do mm -hmm. that and nothing else. And that's mm -hmm. why they bought the mm -hmm. game or why they play the game was their favorite Check part of the game. Um, mm. As opposed to in GTA just being a sandbox around so yeah i mean I'm glad gta was, was just fun like version. i never did the i don't remember doing the stories that much i mean i did the stories of some of them but what i remember is mostly like getting five stars hiding away from the cops and trying to get it back down to zero that was literally what i loved doing in that game but it was just for the shits and the giggles that was really it but uh yeah i mean um yeah i don't know so all this to say like Nowadays, I, I don't know to what degree, like, I'd be comfortable with my kids playing a lot of those games mm -hmm. being young. I guess because I didn't play them either. Yeah. Uh, and also, because man. it was less realistic than it is nowadays. Now it's so realistic ex comparatively. Kids nowadays you know, get exposed to so much, you know. They got internet their phones true. since they're young. True, so true. Well, you're right. Shit they will. Like, so. You're right. Yeah. Boost! At age 10, they already, you know, they know everything. <laughs> At age 10, they already know what the Dirty Sanchez is, they already they know, know all about the reverted wheelbarrow. Mm -hmm. yeah, they know all that. They turn to me and I'm like, what are you saying? What What did you call me? Oh no, it's this sexual position that you do, where it's just like here, and you're like there. I'm like, you're 10. Excuse me? <laughs> what? <laughs> where did you learn this? And how can I get to this website? <laughs> <laughs> Show me, young father one. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, literally. So, I know the generations differ always one from another in things, but... Um, all this to say, if I have kids and they want a game, I'm never gonna put limitations on them because I wouldn't feel like it would be right because I had no limitations put on myself. Right. Well, it's like... Just do well, do you, boo-boo, and, uh, you know, uh, if it doesn't affect your life, then we're good. Like, why would you stop doing what you love? Maybe, actually, if, 
like when we were young, I feel like if my parents had pushed me to explore more within that thing that I loved, which was video games, maybe I would have gone into programming or, you know, coding or into game development or, I don't know, into illustration for games. I could have been pushed towards that direction instead of just always being uh, a closed part of my life. As in, like, even though my parents were okay with me doing it, they always saw it as a detriment to me. Always. Right. You know, and nowadays, when I play video games, I still have a guilt factor when I... Curious. Uh, Zeus. Uh, uh, is that gonna be great having like a little buddy to play video games and help out <laughs> my kids to, to beat the boss every time my kid gets stuck into. Uh, I think it might be the other way around. The clan of our colonel. Or maybe the other way around at some point after the kid grows up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> But, but do you would, feel like uh, you would have to input limitations to him like your parents did on you, for example? Do you feel like that would be Not necessity? in the same way, uh, only like if, uh, like you said, like the, the hobby would uh, impact uh, negatively the other stuff that needs to be done, for example. Right, right. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, little counter-argument to that, Lolo, and you experienced the same thing as mm -hmm. I did growing up because of those limitations. Mm -hmm. It makes you explore other things. Comic books, internet, um, actual books, right? True. If they were like, oh, True. don't go play games, but if you're reading a comic book, it's fine, right? Or, um... True. Yeah. You might get more into Definitely movies, or you might... Because you can't be playing video games, you end up reading. Uh, about yeah. other things that you're also interested in. The way my parents but, did is yeah. that I had to play with my uh, Mzada. What's the, what the fuck is it called again in English? Your allowance. allowance. Yes. Uh, my allowance money if I wanted uh, video games, but if I wanted books, uh, my parents yep. would just buy yep. it for me. I didn't Same have to here. It, uh, with my yeah. allowance money. Although my dad must have wow. was sometimes indulge, you know. Ah, here you go. Mm -hmm. You want this? Ah, come on. All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, oh, for, for my parents, it was simply just, yeah, you can buy whatever game you want as long as it's second-hand and under 10 euros. I'm like, cool. <laughs> no problem. Easy. But, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I get that. I don't know. You, you boys also didn't have a TV in your room growing up. No. Right? Oh, no, no. The computer was there. But it was the, the computer was in your room. Yeah, my room uh, was the, the family computer room. was in the room. Yes, because I had a big, big room that also served as a like, hangout office thing. But then when I became a teenager, I wanted privacy, so I moved to a much smaller room, the one you guys remember. A little bit, I sure. guess, oh, wow. uh, in the big house. Um, and from then on, the only screen I had in my room was either the laptop that I shared with my sister, or the one I had to myself when I was um, 16 or 17. Jesus, I, I can't. I, I gotta say, this this sounds privileged as fuck. But I can't imagine not having grown up with a TV in my room. <laughs> but I'm sorry to say, it's this very, sounds, sounds privileged as privileged, fuck. Especially if you grew up in the 90s. Yeah, it does. Um, well, the thing is, a lot of people I know had TVs in their room by the time they were seven. Like, it's you, not uncommon. Uh -huh. I mean, from my yeah. close friends, in their room, yeah. as like pre-teens and under that age as well, it was mostly the spoiled kids would have. But then again, we also knew a bunch of spoiled kids. So. Uh, but excuse me? Yeah. Baking powder? <laughs> what are you trying to say? <laughs> it is kind but of. excuse me. If you have a TV in your room, <laughs> like, parents are spoiling you, it's great. 
Well, the thing is, imagine the... But all that's stupid, but it's just, it's weird for me because... Most places would have the living room with the family TV, mm -hmm. right? So this is where people spend time together and there's a TV there. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But it's the only room where there's a TV. So if it's the only room where there's a TV and there's four people in the house that want to share the TV, mm -hmm. it's going to be complicated. Uh, yes, it was. Because... <laughs> but that's my point. So for, I guess... I mean, I do not remember a time in my life where I didn't have a TV in my room. I don't remember, like, at all, whatsoever. Because I started playing the NES when I was 3, 4. And I had one of those old school TVs that you switch the channels uh, by rotating them left and right on the TV. And it was, like, minuscule. It was almost as small as my laptop. Pretty much. So th this is how we gamed back in the day, you know. Uh, old school, really close to the TV, switching channels, trying to find the frequency when it's on zero because it's all connected to the fucking cable and things. And yeah, this this for me was a necessity because if had I spent time in the living room doing these things, no one else would get a TV. It would be just too complicated, logistically speaking. It would make no sense. Same thing to watch movies. I wanted to watch Disney movies and cartoons, so I had a TV in my room with which I could do that. You know, it was just normal. But I guess it, what's normal for me was my sister didn't have a TV in her room, huh? I did, but my sister did. It. But I think the biggest reason was because she didn't care. For her, it was like, yeah, I'll watch TV in the living room. Uh, but for me, it was a necessity the moment that. The, the my parents, well, not my parents, but the moment I received the console, it was literally like, well, the kid's going to be spending time on it. Uh, uh, so it would just make more sense for everybody that we can at least divide two things in the house. There will be a TV here for him to play and do these things, and there will be a TV yeah, in the living room. So we can parents, watch like, things together. The, uh, are facilitating you to play in other house households, it was quite the opposite. It was like, let's make this last less but however uh, at one point we did have another tv in the attic and that's where the console moved to after a while uh like when I was which like makes 10 sense or 11 or 12 yeah. but before that it was the regular tv so it was uh weekends in the mornings right and then wednesday afternoons um mm. yeah but i never i only started playing video games in the evening growing up on a weekday especially more as a late team, actually. Before that, it was like, you know, the second wow. one gets in the house, it's like, no screens! You know? It makes you stupid! Wow. Well, don't Sorry. your parents watch movies and shit? Aren't your parents my into mom, cinema? My mom doesn't like screens, period. Doesn't like TV. Look, like, we're talking well, about... That's, it, it's that type that's of lady different. who uh, can't... Like, if you tell her, put this, put this movie on, she can't do it. Like, she doesn't know how to put the input on the HDMI, and then what button to press like especially if you, if you got cable you know or satellite or whatever and you have to put a different input and then use a different remote to make the tv work um it was a nightmare she didn't get anything and didn't want to learn right because uh, instruction manuals are for dumb people so how about to ikea <laughs> <laughs> but that was kind of the thing around the house and because it's a portuguese house you know that mommy is no, she's the manager, right? The general manager. Of yeah, sure. Absolutely. You got the owner, and then you got the general manager. Exactly. <laughs> Takes care of everything. <laughs> the owner just comes and goes. Yeah, I can dig it. <laughs> I know what it's like. But fair enough. The difference would be if we would get kids. We also like video games, right? So it would be something that we can do. Together. Yeah, but you know, yeah, again, there's a difference it's. Too. But I also think, like, for me, like, I grew up with, like, okay, there is one thing that I regret, I guess, or that I just never got into, and it's very hard to get into as an adult for me, which is reading. I don't have that habit. It's unfortunate. It's not that I don't enjoy reading. It's just there's a component of it that I never got used to. Seek information. And, right? yeah, it's just, it, it, it doesn't speak to me the same way, you know, audiovisual means do. Um, 
not to say that I don't enjoy reading. It's just I enjoy reading about things that are non-fiction or things that give me... Maybe like you like history. I like seeing things about philosophy or things about spiritualism. Sure, I like those things and I'll read them. But generally, I don't have an interest in reading actively other things, stories and things like that. I don't really have an interest in it. And I think because I grew up in a household that was dominated by love of cinema. Like, you know, my mom grew up watching Italian cinema, French classical cinema, musicals, which my love for musicals come from her. And then I had my dad who was all into underground, independent European cinema and things like that. And so there was always an... Yeah, there was always something around movies, always, and music, movies and music were always predominant in my household. So I do think that because of that, um, it seemed natural for them, for me, or not for me, but for us to have more than one monitor in the house, because people like different things, people watch different things, you know, it's like... For me, you telling me you had one TV in the living room, but no TV in the room is like saying that there's a stereo system in the living room, but you can't have any stereo system in your room, mm. so you can't listen to your own music. It's kind of like the same one. concept. Nice. Of course you had one, but Lolo, you that's what I mean. Of course I did. No, Lolo. Lolo? Uh, eventually. Early teens, yeah. Mm -hmm. I did when I was nine. My mom's old one, yeah. which was awesome, actually. Mm -hmm. It was an old system, but it was the quality was awesome for the sound. You know, it wasn't the boombox or any thing here like that. It was like a monster of a machine. Good. That's how I taped the... I used to listen to radio and then like tape of sets of songs that I like. Nice, me too. Same. And and I mean? <laughs> yeah. I used to do the same and do the voice talking of the show presenting the songs before they went on. <laughs> like I used to record that myself. I was Fucking like... doing voice acting since I was a kid, I guess. But <laughs> but um but yeah, like for me I remember, like, since I was a kid, I mean, I had a Walkman when I was four, and I had a Discman when it came out. Like, I always had music around. If I, if I didn't have a stereo, I would have at least had a means of hearing music as a kid. Because otherwise, there's music in the living room because my parents are listening to music, or there's music in the next room because my sister is listening to music. So it was a, a whole thing of... I feel like in my family, if everybody the, was yeah. very understanding of each home, one's space. But yeah. if the family is home, there's always music in the house, right? Yeah, pretty much, I, I a, generally. Was, it was a very you know, general thing. Yeah, it's like no when... Uh, TV or mornings on the weekends, there's always music. Yeah, when, when we had lunch, when we were all in the house, which was not that common, but on the weekends, we had lunch, my, my dad would put vinyls on the thing every time like that's what we did there was always music going on from the morning until after lunch then it's pretty much it or if my dad was doing shit in the garden he would open the windows and just put that shit booming like fucking crazy so it's always music and i even remember my mom complaining that she could never put her own music because my dad was always putting music i'd be like well maybe you should get a stereo but, <laughs> uh i mean yeah. In these ways, um, but the, the reason I was saying about the having the TV in your room is that even my friends here in Portugal, uh, the thing is a lot of them shared rooms with uh, siblings. That was a very common thing to do. I think even right. for us it was a common thing, yeah. relatively, At one point, that I had sure. to. Yeah, well, I do think it's relatively a common thing. And most of them either had a TV in their room or like you had in the attic, they would have a specific room where there was a TV for them to be in. That was just a, a common thing. Yeah. But I digress. I don't know why we started talking about these things. It's just my curiosity of time limitations on video games, I guess. Shall we put an amendment on Geneva Convention or something? Or the Universal Declaration of Human Rights? Bro, I think it's a necessary uh, amendment right there, bro. Okay. If I could grab the Declaration of Independence, I would put it as the Seventh Amendment right there. Thou shalt not take time from your children's video game. 
that's central for Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hmm. And then again, I, I'm trying to think how many hours I spent, spent playing video games as a kid, but I can say, because again, I didn't have time limitations, but I don't feel like I even played, like, marathon. Uh, you know, like, as a teenager, maybe I marathon some games, but as a teenager, like, like... week when it was, like, November holiday, or May holiday, or something like that? Do what? I didn't understand. When we had those May holiday, November as well, you know, just one week. Yeah. Um, would you stay home sometimes a whole week because the weather shit to just play video games for a week? What do you mean the weather shit? Even if the, the weather was fine, I would stay home for a week. Maybe. There you go. So you did do marathons, right? Yes, but that's because I didn't really like people. Like, I still don't like people, so... <laughs> Generally, it's uh, it's what you do. You stay home, play video games. <laughs> like I remember coming when we were in summer holidays, and you know when you go back home, as in you go back to Portugal or you go back to wherever your home country is, generally to visit uh, family and things like that. I had to bring my consoles with me because it was the most. I hated going back home on vacation. I absolutely hated it because there was nothing to do. I didn't like going out in the sun. I didn't like playing with other kids. I liked being in my space. So, if I wouldn't have access to my console, I would just be bored out of my mind for two weeks, three weeks, a month. I'd be like, no, I'm done. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. As long as I had waves, I was happy. Get ready. I didn't care much. You're a good man. Yeah. Although in the beginning I wasn't allowed to bring the PlayStation with me, like when I was a kid, no one you believe stupid shit your parents tell you when you're a kid, right? Like you doubt common sense and stuff doesn't work on you. But then another thing they did, which was they said it's not good for the console to be moved around a lot. Like it's better. For nice. Longevity. Nice. <laughs> if it's smart. In one spot. Smart concept, bro. That, that's, <laughs> like, that's, oh, that's smart. That right there. Like we don't, we never move the VCR around the house. It always stays there, right? The TV always stays there. Exactly. There's always a whole shebang to move the TV to another location, or you know, it's like, oh no, it's, those machines are frail, right? So, um, so that's how they got me. Uh, until one day, like a couple of times, there were uh, dinners at their friends' places, right? And it was all grown ups, maybe I was the only kid, and they had a, an office with a TV or something like that. And they would say, sure. okay, and then they bring would... the PlayStation, stay there, it's fine. There's no other kid, it's ah. boring as fuck, right? And I was like, wait yeah. a minute, but how come when you guys got dinners, I can bring the PlayStation, but I can't bring it on a holiday? Because you're going for a long time on holiday, dinner is quick, it's a few hours, I'm like, Oh yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> well, <laughs> You're all moron, girl. You know? Did you uh, did you guys have this this thing as well? Like, because you just mentioned that thing of dinner. Uh -huh. um, like I remember sometimes on holidays or when my parents would go over to friends' houses to like have dinner and shit, and I would go as well. Mm -hmm. uh, generally, most of them would have like boxed up consoles for some reason. And they were always boxed in those Shikita banana kind of boxes where the bananas come in. So, I don't know if no. that was a thing for you, but in no. Portugal it was really common for people to have uh, Mega Drives or Master Systems stowed right. away. It's really, really common. Every time I went somewhere, sometimes even like uh, going to a dentist's office, that happened already as a kid. Like, it was a so common thing in Portugal that that was happening. Uh, and they were the always in... Right? No, we're talking about the mid '90s, late mid '90s. 90s. Huh. Okay. I'm not talking about 2000s. No, no, no. Mid '90s, late '90s. And um, it's just for me, there's something so glorious about seeing a Shikita box of bananas because it just makes me think there's a console inside with video games. Ah, uh, right. I never think there's uh, bananas. Like the what do you call it? The, 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 the biscuit cookies. boxes? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, of course. Uh, <laughs> of course, exactly, with, with all the kit. sewing kits. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Funny, yeah, same thing. But I'll also, I think the box with consoles in the side over the, you know, cookie box with of a course. sewing kit. But I don't know as well if 
there was something I used to do quite often as a kid that I still really enjoy doing nowadays, but I don't as much, which is going to uh, to fairs like antiquity fairs and yeah, things yeah, like that. Of course, right? Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, there was always there was always some place where somebody was selling mm -hmm. old consoles or old okay. games, yeah. and they were always in those boxes, in the Shakiti banana boxes. I don't know <laughs> what was up with that. They were always in those things. Like, I have such a clear image of it. Such, such a clear image. And so for me, even nowadays, sometimes I see them in supermarkets, which is rare because you don't have as much Chiquita branded bananas nowadays, I think. Or at least you don't see it as often. But whenever I do, I'm, my first thought is like, <gasps> maybe there's a Mega Drive inside. You know, it's, it's always my first thought. There's a Mega thought. Drive in the fruit section, yep. <laughs> yeah, 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 uh... exactly. It's, it's insane. Like, I think that those are some of my most uh, ingrained memories of certain items that are in my head are those Shikita boxes. Shikita banana boxes. If uh, everybody that's watching doesn't know what I'm talking about, just type Shikita banana box. And you'll see it's like this cardboard big boxes with uh, the, the Shikita brown brand on it. That's it. I like this song. Shikita, Shikita. Yeah, Sekiro, Sekiro. Oh yeah. Ah oh, man, I think those are my only good memories of childhood. <laughs> Chiquita banana boxes. <laughs> Let's see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this was a very fun hangout. It was nice to talk to you both and uh, to talk to all these people. But I have stuff to do tomorrow, like shaping the future. You you know, no big deal. You Just, lie. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Follow Dagon underscore Keldrum. He's going through a PS5, PS4, sorry, PS4 bucket list of games that everybody should play, and that he wants to play. Um, hmm. Don't know if everybody so should I play, know. but yeah, the, yeah, the games I've been like meaning to play for a long time. Must play is from the PS4, right? The reason why you would get a PS4 as opposed to another console to play those games, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and it's got quite a comprehensive list it's really nice go to the underscore jack reinhardt for game pass games retro games jack and papu games jack and games. lolo games Select and games. uh <laughs> and games and go to jack and papu on youtube games. games more games and more talking shit games games and monsieur it was a pleasure I'll see you next Games. time. Games! Bye-bye. Games! Games! <laughs>